The Book of Second Kings, Chapter 1 Then Moab rebelled against Yasharel after the death of Ahav, and Ahaziyahu fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria, and was sick. And he sent messengers, and said unto them, Go, inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. But the angel of Yahuwah said to Eliyahu the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, Is it not because there is not an Elohim in Yasharel that you go to inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron? Now therefore, thus saith Yahuwah, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shall surely die. And Eliyahu departed. And when the messengers turned back unto him, he said unto them, why are ye now turned back? And they said unto him, There came a man up to meet us, and said unto us, Go, turn again unto the king that sent you, and say unto him, Thus saith Yahuwah, Is it not because there is not an Elohim in Yasharel that thou sendest to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron? Therefore thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And he said unto them, what manner of man was he which came up to meet you and told you these words? And they answered him, He was a hairy man, and girt with a girdle of leather about his loins. And he said, It is Eliyahu the Tishbite. Then the king said unto him a captain of fifty with his fifty. And he went up to him, and behold, he sat on the top of a hill, and he spake unto him, Thou man of Elohim, the king hath said, Come down. And Eliyahu answered and said to the captain of fifty, If I be a man of Elohim, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Again also he sent unto him another captain of fifty with his fifty. And he answered and said unto him, O man of Elohim, thus hath the king said, Come down quickly. And Eliyahu answered and said unto them, if I be a man of Elohim, let fire come down from heaven, and consume thee and thy fifty. And the fire of Elohim came down from heaven, and consumed him and his fifty. And he sent again a captain of the third fifty with his fifty. And the third captain of fifty went up, and came, and fell on his knees before Eliyahu, and besought him, and said unto him, O man of Elohim, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these fifty thy servants be precious in thy sight. Behold, there came fire down from heaven, and burnt up the two captains of the former fifties with their fifties. Therefore let my life now be precious in thy sight. And the angel of Yahuwah said unto Eliyahu, Go down with him, be not afraid of him. And he arose, and went down with him unto the king. And he said unto him, Thus saith Yahuwah, Forasmuch as thou hast sent messengers to inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron, is it not because there is no Elohim in Yasharel to inquire of his word? Therefore thou shalt not come down off that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. So he died according to the word of Yahuwah, which Eliyahu had spoken. And Yehoram reigned in his stead. In the second year of Yehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Yehuda, because he had no son. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaziyahu, which he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yasharel? Second Kings 2 and it came to pass, when Yahuwah would take up Eliyahu into heaven by a whirlwind, that Eliyahu went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Eliyahu said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for Yahuwah has sent thee to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As Yahuwah liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha, and said unto him, Knowest thou that Yahuwah will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Eliyahu said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for Yahuwah has sent me to Jericho. And he said, 
as Yahuwah liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha, and said unto him, Knowest thou that Yahuwah will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Eliyahu said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee, here, for Yahuwah has sent me to Yardan. And he said, As Yahuwah liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they two went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went, and stood to view afar off, and they too stood by Yardan. And Eliyahu took his mantle, and wrapped it together, and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Eliyahu said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee, before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy ruach be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Eliyahu went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Yasharel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes, and rent them in two pieces. And he took up also the mantle of Eliyahu that fell from him, and went back and stood by the bank of Yardan. And he took the mantle of Eliyahu that fell from him, and smote the waters, and said, Where is Yahuwah Elohim of Eliyahu? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, The Ruach of Eliyahu doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him, and bowed themselves to the ground before him. And they said unto him, Behold now, there be with thy servants fifty strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master. Lest peradventure the Ruach of Yahuwah have taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, Ye shall not sin. And when they urged him till he was ashamed, he said, Send. They sent therefore fifty men, and they sought three days, but found him not. And when they came again to him, for he tarried at Jericho, he said unto them, Did I not say unto you, Go not? And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Adonai seeth, but the water is not, and the ground barren. And he said, Bring me a new cruise, and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of the waters, and cast the salt in there, and said, Thus saith Yahuwah, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake. And he went up from thence unto Bethel, and as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children out of the city, and mocked him, and said unto him, Go up, thou bald head, go up, thou bald head. And he turned back, and looked on them, and cursed them in the name of Yahuwah. And there came forth two she-bears out of the wood, and tare forty and two children of them. And he went from thence to Mount Carmel, and from thence he returned to Samaria. Second Kings 3 now Jehoram the son of Ahab began to reign over Yasharel in Samaria the eighteenth year of Jehoshaphat king of Yehuda, and reigned twelve years. And he wrought evil in the sight of Yahuwah, but not like his father, and like his mother. For he put away the image of Baal that his father had made. Nevertheless he cleaved unto the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, which made Yasharel to sin. He departed not therefrom. 
And Mesha, king of Moab, was a sheep master, and rendered unto the king of Yasharel a hundred thousand lambs and a hundred thousand rams with the wool. But it came to pass, when Ahab was dead, that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Yasharel. And king Jehoram went out of Samaria the same time, and numbered all Yasharel. And he went and sent to Jehoshaphat the king of Yehuda, saying, The king of Moab hath rebelled against me. Wilt thou go with me against Moab to battle? And he said, I will go up. I am as thou art, my people as thy people, and my horses as thy horses. And he said, Which way shall we go up? And he answered, The way through the wilderness of Edom. So the king of Yasharel went, and the king of Yehuda, and the king of Edom, and they fetched a compass of seven days' journey, and there was no water for the host and for the cattle that followed them. And the king of Yasharel said, Alas, that Yahuwah hath called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of Yahuwah, that we may inquire of Yahuwah by him? And one of the king of Yasharel's servants answered and said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Aleyahu. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of Yahuwah is with him. So the king of Yasharel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. And Elisha said unto the king of Yasharel, What have I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophets of thy father, and to the prophets of thy mother. And the king of Yasharel said unto him, Nay, for Yahuwah hath called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, As Yahuwah Seveoth liveth, before whom I stand, surely, were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Yehuda, I would not look toward thee, nor see thee. But now bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass, when the minstrel played, that the hand of Yahuwah came upon him. And he said, Thus saith Yahuwah, Make this valley full of ditches. For thus saith Yahuwah, Ye shall not see wind, neither shall ye see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with water, that ye may drink, both ye and your cattle and your beasts. And this is but a light thing in the sight of Yahuwah. He will deliver the Moabites also into your hand, and ye shall smite every fenced city, and every choice city, and shall fell every good tree, and stop all wells of water, and mar every good piece of land with stones. And it came to pass in the morning, when the meat offering was offered, that, behold, there came water by the way of Edom, and the country was filled with water. And when all the Moabites heard that the kings were come up to fight against them, they gathered all that were able to put on armor, and upward, and stood in the border. And they rose up early in the morning, and the sun shone upon the water, and the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood. And they said, This is blood! The kings are surely slain, and they have smitten one another. Now therefore Moab to the spoil! And when they came to the camp of Yasharel, the Yasharali rose up and smote the Moabites, so that they fled before them. But they went forward smiting the Moabites, even in their country. And they beat down the cities, and on every good piece of land cast every man his stone, and filled it. And they stopped all the wells of water, and felled all the good trees. Only in Kerharah Seth left they the stones thereof, howbeit the slingers went about it and smote it. And when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too sore for him, he took with him seven hundred men that drew swords, to break through even unto the king of Edom, but they could not. Then he took his eldest son that should have reigned in his stead, and offered him for a burnt offering upon the wall. And there was great indignation against Yasharel, and they departed from him, and returned to their own land. Second Kings 4 Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant my husband is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear Yahuwah, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, 
Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him, and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of Elohim, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and live thou, and thy children of the rest. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was, that as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of Elohim, which passeth by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick. And it shall be, when he cometh to us, that he shall turn in thither. And it fell on a day that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi his servant, Call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? What is thou be spoken for to the king, or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among mine own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily, she hath no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my Adonai, thou man of Elohim, do not lie unto thine handmaid. And the woman conceived and bear a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her according to the time of life. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to a lad, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of Elohim, and shut the door upon him, and went out. And she called unto her husband, and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the donkeys, that I may run to the man of Elohim and come again. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, It shall be well. Then she saddled a donkey, and said to her servant, Drive, and go forward. Slack not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. So she went and came unto the man of Elohim to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass, when the man of Elohim saw her afar off, that he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her, and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with thy child? And she answered, It is well. And when she came to the man of Elohim to the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to thrust her away. And the man of Elohim said, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her. And Yahuwah hath hid it from me, and hath not told me. Then she said, Did I desire a son of my Adonai? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, Gird up thy loins, and take my staff in thine hand, and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. And if any salute thee, answer him not again, and lay my staff upon the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, As Yahuwah liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them, and laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him, and told him, saying, The child is not awake. And when Elisha was come into the house, Behold, the child was dead, and laid upon his bed. He went in, therefore, and shut the door upon them twain, and prayed unto Yahuwah. And he went up, and lay upon the child, and put his mouth upon his mouth, 
and his eyes upon his eyes, and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro, and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite. So he called her. And when she was come in unto him, he said, Take up thy son. Then she went in and fell at his feet, and bowed herself to the ground, and took up her son, and went out. And Elisha came again to Gilgal, and there was a dearth in the land, and the sons of the prophets were sitting before him. And he said unto his servant, Set on the great pot, and seethe pottage for the sons of the prophets. And one went out into the field to gather herbs, and found a wild vine, and gathered thereof wild gourds his lap full, and came and shred them into the pot of pottage, for they knew them not. So they poured out for the men to eat, and it came to pass, as they were eating of the pottage, that they cried out, and said, O thou man of Elohim, there is death in the pot, and they could not eat thereof. But he said, Then bring meal. And he cast it into the pot, and he said, Pour out for the people, that they may eat. And there was no harm in the pot. And there came a man from Baal Shalisha, and brought the man of Elohim bread of the first fruits, twenty loaves of barley, and full ears of corn in the husk thereof. And he said, Give unto the people, that they may eat. And his servitor said, What, shall I step this before a hundred men? He said again, Give the people, that they may eat. For thus saith Yahuwah, They shall eat, and shall leave thereof. So he set it before them, and they did eat, and left thereof, according to the word of Yahuwah. Second Kings 5 Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable, because by him Yahuwah had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies, and had brought away captive out of the land of Yasharel a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would Elohim my Adonai were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in, and told his Adonai, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Yasharel. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Yasharel. And he departed, and took with him ten talents of silver, and six thousand pieces of gold, and ten changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Yasharel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, Behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass, when the king of Yasharel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes, and said, Am I Elohim to kill and to make alive, that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. And it was so, when Elisha the man of Elohim had heard that the king of Yasharel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Yasharel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot, and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Yardan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth, and went away, and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me, and stand, and call on the name of Yahuwah his Elohim, and strike his hand over the place, and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Farpa, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Yasharel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near, and spake unto him, and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, 
wouldest thou not have done it? How much rather then, when he saith to thee, Wash, and be clean? Then went he down, and dipped himself seven times in Yardan, according to the saying of the man of Elohim. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And he returned to the man of Elohim, he and all his company, and came and stood before him. And he said, Behold, now I know that there is no Elohim in all the earth but in Yasharel. Now therefore I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. But he said, As Yahuwah liveth before whom I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. And Naaman said, Shall there not then, I pray thee, be given to thy servant two mules' burden of earth? For thy servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice unto other gods, but unto Yahuwah. In this thing Yahuwah pardon thy servant, that when my master goeth into the house of Rimon to worship there, and he leaneth on my hand, and I bow myself in the house of Rimon, when I bow down myself in the house of Rimon, Yahuwah pardon thy servant in this thing. And he said unto him, Go in peace. So he departed from him a little way. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of Elohim, said, Behold, my master has spared Naaman the Syrian, and not receiving at his hands that which he brought. But as Yahuwah liveth, I will run after him, and take somewhat of him. So Gehazi followed after Naaman, and when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to meet him, and said, Is all well? And he said, All is well. My master has sent me, saying, Behold, even now there be come to me from Mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of raiment. And Naaman said, Be content, take two talents. And he urged him, and bound two talents of silver in two bags, with two changes of garments, and laid them upon two of his servants, and they bare them before him. And when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand, and bestowed them in the house, and he let the men go, and they departed. But he went in and stood before his master. And Elisha said unto him, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went no whither. And he said unto him, Went not mine heart with thee, when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee? Is it a time to receive money, and to receive garments, and olive yards, and vineyards, and sheep, and oxen, and men servants, and maid servants? The leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee, and unto thy seed for ever. And he went out from his presence, a leper as white as snow. Second Kings 6 And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Yardan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there, where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them. And when they came to Yardan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of Elohim said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick and cast it in thither. And the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and took it. Then the king of Syria warred against Yasharel, and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of Elohim sent unto the king of Yasharel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Yasharel sent to the place which the man of Elohim told him, and warned him of, and saved himself there, not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing, and he called his servants, and said unto them, 
Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Yasharel? And one of his servants said, None, my Adonai, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Yasharel, telleth the king of Yasharel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and come past the city about. And when the servant of the man of Elohim was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host come past the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Yahua, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And Yahua opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto Yahua and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom ye seek. But he led them to Samaria. And it came to pass, when they were come into Samaria, that Elisha said, Yahua, open the eyes of these men, that they may see. And Yahua opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Yasharel said unto Elisha, when he saw them, My father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? And he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. Wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow? Set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink, and go to their master. And he prepared great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away, and they went to their master. So the band of Syria came no more into the land of Yasharel. And it came to pass after this that Ben-Hadad king of Syria gathered all his host and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for fourscore pieces of silver, and the fourth part of a cab of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. And as the king of Yasharel was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help my Adonai, O king. And he said, If Yahua do not help thee, when shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor or out of the wine press? And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son, that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son, and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son, that we may eat him and she hath hid her son. And it came to pass, when the king heard the words of the woman, that he rent his clothes, and he passed by upon the wall, and the people looked, and behold, he had sackcloth within upon his flesh. Then he said, Elohim do so and more also to me, if the head of Elisha the son of Shaphat shall stand on him this day. But Elisha sat in his house, and the elders sat with him, and the king sent a man from before him. But ere the messenger came to him, he said to the elders, See ye how this son of a murderer hath sent to take away mine head? Look, when the messenger cometh, shut the door, and hold him fast at the door. Is not the sound of his master's feet behind him? And while he yet talked with them, behold, the messenger came down unto him, and he said, Behold, this evil is of Yahuwah. What should I wait for Yahuwah? any longer. Second Kings 7 Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of Yahua. Thus saith Yahua, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then an Adonai on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of Elohim and said, Behold, if Yahuwah would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? 
And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. And there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate, and they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say, We will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come, and let us fall unto the hosts of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. For Yahuwah had made the hosts of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots, and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Yasharel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites, and the kings of the Egyptians, to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight, and left their tents, and their horses, and their donkeys, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent, and did eat and drink, and carried thence silver and gold and raiment, and went and hid it, and came again, and entered into another tent, and carried thence also, and went and hid it. Then they said one to another, We do not well. This day is a day of good tidings, and we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come, that we may go and tell the king's household. So they came and called unto the porter of the city, and they told them, saying, We came to the camp of the Syrians, and, behold, there was no man there, neither voice of man, but horses tied and donkeys tied, and the tents as they were. And he called the porters, and they told it to the king's house within. And the king arose in the night, and said unto his servants, I will now show you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we be hungry. Therefore are they gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, When they come out of the city, we shall catch them alive, and get into the city. And one of his servants answered and said, Let some take, I pray thee, five of the horses that remain, which are left in the city. Behold, they are as all the multitude of Yasharel that are left in it. Behold, I say, they are even as all the multitude of the Yasharali that are consumed. And let us send and see. They took therefore two chariot horses, and the king sent after the hosts of the Syrians, saying, Go and see. And they went after them unto Yardan, and, lo, all the way was full of garments and vessels, which the Syrians had cast away in their haste. And the messengers returned and told the king. And the people went out and spoiled the tents of the Syrians. So a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, according to the word of Yahuwah. And the king appointed the Adonai, on whose hand he leaned, to have the charge of the gate. And the people trode upon him in the gate, and he died, as a man of Elohim had said, who spake when the king came down to him. And it came to pass, as a man of Elohim had spoken to the king, saying, Two measures of barley for a shekel, and a measure of fine flour for a shekel, shall be tomorrow about this time in the gate of Samaria. And that Adonai answered the man of Elohim, and said, now, behold, if Yahuwah should make windows in heaven, might such a thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. And so it fell out unto him, for the people trode upon him in the gate, and he died. Second Kings 8 then spake Elisha unto the woman, whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise, and go thou and thine household, and sojourn wheresoever thou canst sojourn. For Yahuwah hath called for a famine, and it shall also come upon the land seven years. And the woman arose, and did after the saying of the man of Elohim, and she went with her household, and sojourned in the land of the Philistines seven years. And it came to pass at the seven years' end, that the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines, and she went forth to cry unto the king for her house and for her land. And the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of Elohim, saying, Tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elisha hath done. And it came to pass, as he was telling the king how he had restored a dead body to life, that, behold, the woman whose son he had restored to life 
cry to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My Adonai, O king, this is the woman, and this is her son, whom Elisha restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed unto her a certain officer, saying, Restore all that was hers, and all the fruits of the field since the day that she left the land, even until now. And Elisha came to Damascus, and Ben-Hadab the king of Syria was sick, and it was told him, saying, The man of Elohim is come hither. And the king said unto Hazael, Take a present in thine hand, and go, meet the man of Elohim, and inquire of Yahuwah by him, saying, Shall I recover of this disease? So Hazael went to meet him, and took a present with him, even of every good thing of Damascus, forty camels' burden, and came and stood before him, and said, Thy son Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, has sent me to thee, saying, Shall I recover of this disease? And Elisha said unto him, Go, say unto him, Thou mayest certainly recover, howbeit Yahuwah hath showed me that he shall surely die. And he settled his countenance steadfastly, until he was ashamed, and the man of Elohim wept. And Hazael said, Why weepeth my Adonai? And he answered, Because I know the evil that thou wilt do unto the children of Yasharel. Their strongholds wilt thou set on fire, and their young men wilt thou slay with the sword, and wilt dash their children, and rip up their women with child. And Hazael said, But what, is thy servant a dog, that he should do this great thing? And Elisha answered, Yahuwah hath showed me that thou shalt be king over Syria. So he departed from Elisha, and came to his master, who said to him, What said Elisha to thee? And he answered, He told me that thou shouldest surely recover. And it came to pass on the morrow that he took a thick cloth, and dipped it in water, and spread it on his face, so that he died. And Hazael reigned in his stead. And in the fifth year of Yoram, the son of Ahab, king of Yasharel, Jehoshaphat being then king of Yehuda, Jehoram the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Yehuda, began to reign. Thirty and two years old was he when he began to reign, and he ran eight years in Jerusalem, and he walked in the way of the kings of Yasharel, as did the house of Ahab, for the daughter of Ahab was his wife, and he did evil in the sight of Yahuwah. Yet Yahuwah would not destroy Yehuda for David his servant's sake, as he promised him to give him always a light and to his children. In his days, Adam revolted from under the hand of Yehuda and made a king over themselves. So Yoram went over to Zair and all the chariots with him, and he rose by night and smote the Edomites, which compassed him about, and the captains of the chariots, and the people fled into their tents. Yet Adam revolted from under the hand of Yehuda unto this day. Then Libna revolted at the same time. And the rest of the acts of Yoram and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yehuda? And Yoram slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And Ahaziah, his son, reigned in his stead. In the twelfth year of Yoram, the son of Ahav, king of Yasharel, did Ahaziah, the son of Yehoram, king of Yehuda, begin to reign. Two and twenty years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign, and he reigned one year in Yerushalayim. And his mother's name was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri, king of Yasharel. And he walked in the way of the house of Ahav, and did evil in the sight of Yahuwah, as did the house of Ahav, for he was a son-in-law of the house of Ahav. And he went with Yoram, the son of Ahav, to the war against Hazael, king of Syria, and Ramoth Gilead, and the Syrians wounded Yoram. And King Yoram went back to be healed in Yezreel of the wounds which the Syrians had given him at Ramah, when he fought against Hazael, king of Syria. And Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Yehuda, went down to see Yoram, the son of Ahab, in Yezreel, because he was sick.
2 Kings 9. And Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets, and said unto him, Gird up thy loins, and take this box of oil in thine hand, and go to Ramoth Gilead. And when thou comest thither, look out there Yahu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, and go in, and make him arise up from among his brethren, and carry him to an inner chamber. Then take the box of oil, and pour it on his head, and say, Thus saith Yahuwah, I have anointed thee king over Yasharel. Then open the door, and flee, and tarry not. So the young man, even the young man the prophet, went to Ramoth Gilead. And when he came, behold, the captains of the host were sitting. And he said, I have an errand to thee, O captain. And Yehu said, Unto which of all us? And he said, To thee, O captain. And he arose and went into the house, and he poured the oil on his head, and said unto him, Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim of Yasharel, I have anointed thee king over the people of Yahuwah, even over Yasharel. And thou shalt smite the house of Ahav thy master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of Yahuwah at the hand of Yisabel. For the whole house of Ahav shall perish, and I will cut off from Ahav him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Yasharel. And I will make the house of Ahav like the house of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha the son of Ahiyahu. And the dog shall eat Jezebel in the portion of Yisrael, and there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door and fled. Then Yehu came forth to the servants of his Adonai, and one said unto him, Is all well? Wherefore came this mad fellow to thee? And he said unto them, Ye know the man and his communication. And they said, It is false, tell us now. And he said, Thus and thus spake he to me, saying, Thus saith Yahuwah, I have anointed a king over Yasharel. Then they hasted, and took every man his garment, and put it under him on the top of the stairs, and blew with trumpets, saying, Yehu is king! So Yehu the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, conspired against Yoram. Now Yoram had kept Ramoth Gilead, he and all Yasharel, because of Hazael king of Syria. But king Yoram was returned to be healed in Yisrael of the wounds which the Syrians had given him, when he fought with Hazael king of Syria. And Yehu said, If it be your minds, then let none go forth nor escape out of the city to go to tell it in Yisrael. So Yehu rode in a chariot and went to Yisrael, for Yoram lay there, and Ahaziyahu king of Yehuda was come down to see Yoram. And there stood a watchman on the tower in Yisrael, and he spied the company of Yehu as he came, and said, I see a company. And Yoram said, Take a horseman, and send to meet them, and let him say, Is it peace? So there went one on horseback to meet him, and said, Thus saith the king, Is it peace? And Yehu said, What hast thou to do with peace? Turn thee behind me. And the watchman told, saying, The messenger came to them, but he cometh not again. Then he sent out a second on horseback, which came to them, and said, Thus saith the king, Is it peace? And Yehu answered, What hast thou to do with peace? Turn thee behind me. And the watchman told, saying, He came even unto them, and cometh not again. And the driving is like the driving of Yehu, the son of Nimshi, for he driveth furiously. And Yoram said, Make ready. And his chariot was made ready. And Yoram king of Yasharel and Ahaziyahu king of Yehuda went out, each in his chariot, and they went out against Yehu, and met him in the portion of Nebah the Israelite. And it came to pass, when Yoram saw Yehu, that he said, Is it peace, Yehu? And he answered, What peace, so long as the whoredoms of thy mother Yisabel and her witchcrafts are so many? And Yoram turned his hands and fled, and said to Ahaziyahu, There is treachery, O Ahaziyahu! And Yehu drew a bow with his full strength, and smote Yehoram between his arms. And the arrow went out at his heart, and he sunk down in his chariot. Then said Yehu to Bidkar his captain, Take up and cast him in the portion of the field of Neboth the Israelite. For remember how that 
when I am now rode together after Ahav his father, Yahua laid this burden upon him. Surely I have seen yesterday the blood of Nevoth and the blood of his sons, saith Yahua, and I will requite thee in this plat, saith Yahua. Now therefore take and cast him into the plat of ground, according to the word of Yahua. But when Ahazi Yahu, the king of Yehuda, saw this, he fled by the way of the garden house, and Yehu followed after him, and said, Smite him also in the chariot. And they did so at the going up to Gur, which is by Ebleam, and he fled to Megiddo, and died there. And his servants carried him in a chariot to Jerusalem, and buried him in his sepulchre with his fathers in the city of David. And in the eleventh year of Yoram, the son of Ahab began Ahaziyahu to reign over Yehuda. And when Yehu was come to Yezreel, Yezebel heard of it, and she painted her face, and tired her head, and looked out at a window. And as Yehu entered in at the gate, she said, Had Zimri peace, who slew his master? And he lifted up his face to the window, and said, Who is on my side? Who? And there looked out to him two or three eunuchs. And he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses, and he trod her underfoot. And when he was come in, he did eat and drink, and said, Go, see now this cursed woman, and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. And they went to bury her, but they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. Wherefore they came again and told him. And he said, This is the word of Yahua, which he spake by his servant Eliyahu the Tishbite, saying, And the portion of Yisrael shall dogs eat the flesh of Yisabel, and the carcass of Yisabel shall be as dung upon the face of the field, and the portion of Yisrael so that they shall not say, This is Jezebel. Second Kings 10 And Ahav had seventy sons in Samaria. And Yehu wrote letters, and sent to Samaria unto the rulers of Yisrael, to the elders, and to them that brought up Ahav's children, saying, Now, as soon as this letter cometh to you, seeing your master's sons are with you, and there are with you chariots and horses, a fenced city also, and armor, look even out the best and meetest of your master's sons, and set him on his father's throne, and fight for your master's house. But they were exceedingly afraid, and said, Behold, two kings stood not before him, how then shall we stand? And he that was over the house, and he that was over the city, the elders also, and the bringers up of the children, sent to Yehu, saying, We are thy servants, and will do all that thou shalt bid us. We will not make any king. Do thou that which is good in mine eyes. Then he wrote a letter the second time to them, saying, If ye be mine, and if ye will hearken unto my voice, Take ye the heads of the men, your master's sons, and come to me to Yezreel by tomorrow this time. Now the king's sons, being seventy persons, were with the great men of the city which brought them up. And it came to pass, when the letter came to them, that they took the king's sons and slew seventy persons, and put their heads in baskets, and sent him them to Yezreel. And there came a messenger, and told him, saying, they have brought the heads of the king's sons. And he said, Lay ye them in two heaps at the entering in of the gate until the morning. And it came to pass in the morning that he went out and stood and said to all the people, Ye be righteous, behold, I conspired against my master and slew him. But who slew all these? Know now that there shall fall unto the earth nothing of the word of Yahuwah, which Yahuwah spake concerning the house of Ahav, for Yahuwah hath done that which he spake by his servant Eliyahu. So Yehu slew all that remained of the house of Ahav in Yisrael, and all his great men, and his kinfolk, and his priests, until he left him none remaining. And he arose, and departed, and came to Samaria. And as he was at the shearing house in the way, 
Yehu met with the brethren of Ahaziyahu, king of Yehuda, and said, Who are ye? And they answered, We are the brethren of Ahaziyahu, and we go down to salute the children of the king and the children of the queen. And he said, Take them alive. And they took them alive and slew them at the pit of the shearing house, even two and forty men, neither left he any of them. And when he was departed thence, he lighted on Yehonadav, the son of Rechav, coming to meet him, and he saluted him, and said to him, Is thine heart right, as my heart is with thy heart? And Yehonadav answered, It is. If it be, give me thine hand. And he gave him his hand, and he took him up to him into the chariot. And he said, Come with me, and see my zeal for Yahuwah. So they made him ride in his chariot. And when he came to Samaria, he slew all that remained unto Ahav in Samaria, till he had destroyed him, according to the saying of Yahuwah, which he spake to Eliyahu. And Yehu gathered all the people together, and said unto them, Ahav served Baal a little, but Yehu shall serve him much. Now therefore call unto me all the prophets of Baal, all his servants, and all his priests. Let none be wanting, for I have a great sacrifice to do to Baal. Whosoever shall be wanting, he shall not live. But Yehu did it in subtlety, to the intent that he might destroy the worshippers of Baal. And Yehu said, Proclaim a solemn assembly for Baal. And they proclaimed it. And Yehu sent throughout all Yasharel, and all the worshippers of Baal came, so that there was not a man left that came not. And they came into the house of Baal, and the house of Baal was full from one end to another. And he said unto him that was over the vestry, Bring forth vestments for all the worshippers of Baal. And he brought them forth vestments. And Yehu went, and Yehonadab the son of Rechav, into the house of Baal, and said unto the worshippers of Baal, Search, and look, that there be here with you none of the servants of Yahuwah, but the worshippers of Baal only. And when they went in to offer sacrifices and burnt offerings, Yehu appointed fourscore men without, and said, If any of the men whom I have brought into your hand escape, he that letteth him go, his life shall be for the life of him. And it came to pass, as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, that Yehu said to the guard and to the captains, Go in and slay them, let none come forth. And they smote them with the edge of the sword, and the guard and the captains cast them out, and went to the city of the house of Baal. And they brought forth the images out of the house of Baal, and burned them. And they brake down the image of Baal, and brake down the house of Baal, and made it a draught house unto this day. Thus Yehu destroyed Baal out of Yasharel. Howbeit, from the sins of Yeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Yasharel to sin, Yehu departed not from after them, to wit the golden calves that were in Bet'el, and that were in Dan. And Yahuwah said unto Yehu, Because thou hast done well in executing that which is right in mine eyes, and hast done unto the house of Ahav according to all that was in mine heart, thy children of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Yasharel. But Yehu took no heed to walk in the law of Yahuwah Elohim of Yasharel with all his heart. For he departed not from the sins of Yeroboam, which made Yasharel to sin. In those days, Yahuwah began to cut Yasharel short, and Hazael smote them in all the coasts of Yasharel. From Yardan eastward, all the land of Gilead, the Gadites, and the Reubenites, and the Manassites, from Aror, which is by the river Arnon, even Gilead and Bashan. Now the rest of the acts of Yahu and all that he did, and all his might, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yasharel? And Yehu slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. And Yeho Ahaz, his son, reigned in his stead. And the time that Yehu reigned over Yasharel in Samaria was twenty and eight years. Second Kings 11 and when Athal Yahu, the mother of Ahazi Yahu, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal. But Yehosheva, 
the daughter of King Yoram, sister of Ahaziyahu, took Yoash, the son of Ahaziyahu, and stole him from among the king's sons, which were slain. And they hid him, even him and his nurse, in the bedchamber from Athaliyahu, so that he was not slain. And he was with her hid in the house of Yahua six years. And Athaliyahu did reign over the land. In the seventh year, Yahuyada sent and fetched the rulers over hundreds, with the captains and the guard, and brought them to him into the house of Yahua, and made a covenant with them, and took an oath of them in the house of Yahua, and showed them the king's son. And he commanded them, saying, This is the thing that ye shall do. A third part of you that enter in on the Sabbath shall even be keepers of the watch of the king's house, and a third part shall be at the gate of Zer, and a third part at the gate behind the guard. So shall ye keep the watch of the house, that it be not broken down. And two parts of all you that go forth on the Sabbath, even they shall keep the watch of the house of Yahua about the king. And ye shall compass the king round about, every man with his weapons in his hand. And he that cometh within the ranges, let him be slain. And be ye with the king as he goeth out, and as he cometh in. And the captains over the hundreds did according to all things that Yahuyada the priest commanded. And they took every man his men that were to come in on the Sabbath, with them that should go out on the Sabbath, and came to Yahuyada the priest. And to the captains over hundreds did the priest give King David spears and shields that were in the temple of Yahua. And the guard stood, every man with his weapons in his hand, round about the king, from the right corner of the temple to the left corner of the temple, along by the altar and the temple. And he brought forth the king's son, and put the crown upon him, and gave him the testimony, and they made him king, and anointed him, and they clapped their hands, and said, Elohim save the king. And when Athaliyahu heard the noise of the guard and of the people, she came to the people into the temple of Yahua. And when she looked, Behold, the king stood by a pillar, as the manor was, and the princes and the trumpeters by the king, and all the people of the land rejoiced and blew with trumpets. And Athaliyahu rent her clothes and cried, Treason! Treason! But Yahuyada the priest commanded the captains of the hundreds, the officers of the host, and said unto them, Have her forth without the ranges, and him that followeth her kill with the sword. For the priest had said, Let her not be slain in the house of Yahuwah. And they laid hands on her, and she went by the way by the which the horses came into the king's house, and there was she slain. And Yahuyada made a covenant between Yahuwah and the king and the people, that they should be Yahuwah's people, between the king also and the people. And all the people of the land went into the house of Baal and break it down, his altars and his images break they in pieces thoroughly, and slew Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. And the priest appointed officers over the house of Yahua. And he took the rulers over hundreds, and the captains, and the guard, and all the people of the land. And they brought down the king from the house of Yahua, and came by the way of the gate of the guard to the king's house. And he sat on the throne of the kings. And all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was in quiet, and they slew Athaliyahu with the sword beside the king's house. Seven years old was Yahuash when he began to reign. Second Kings 12 In the seventh year of Yahu, Yahuash began to reign. And forty years reigned he in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Zivijah of Be'er Sheva. And Yahuash did that which was right in the sight of Yahua all his days, wherein Yahuyada the priest instructed him. But the high places were not taken away. The people still sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places. And Yahuash said to the priests, all the money of the dedicated things that is brought into the house of Yahuwah, even the money of every one that passes the account, the money that every man is set at, and all the money that comes into any man's heart to bring into the house of Yahuwah, let the priest take it to them. 
every man of his acquaintance, and let them repair the breaches of the house, wheresoever any breach shall be found. But it was so, that in the three and twentieth year of King Yehuash, the priests had not repaired the breaches of the house. Then King Yehuash called for Yahuyada the priest, and the other priests, and said unto them, Why repair ye not the breaches of the house? Now therefore receive no more money of your acquaintance, but deliver it for the breaches of the house. And the priest consented to receive no more money of the people, neither to repair the breaches of the house. But Yehuyada the priest took a chest and bored a hole in the lid of it, and set it beside the altar, on the right side, as one cometh into the house of Yahuwah. And the priests that kept the door put therein all the money that was brought into the house of Yahuwah. And it was so, when they saw that there was much money in the chest, that the king's scribe and the high priest came up, and they put up in bags, and told the money that was found in the house of Yahuwah. And they gave the money, being told, into the hands of them that did the work, that had the oversight of the house of Yahuwah. And they laid it out to the carpenters and builders that wrought upon the house of Yahuwah, and to masons and hewers of stone, and to buy timber and hewed stone to repair the breaches of the house of Yahuwah, and for all that was laid out for the house to repair it. Howbeit, there were not made for the house of Yahuwah bowls of silver, snuffers, basins, trumpets, any vessels of gold or vessels of silver, of the money that was brought into the house of Yahuwah. But they gave that to the workmen, and repaired therewith the house of Yahuwah. Moreover, they reckoned not with the men, into whose hand they delivered the money to be bestowed on workmen, for they dealt faithfully. The trespass money and sin money was not brought into the house of Yahuwah. It was the priests. Then Hazael king of Syria went up and fought against Gath, and took it. And Hazael set his face to go up to Jerusalem. And Yahuash king of Yehuda took all the hollow things that Jehoshaphat and Jehoram and Ahaziyahu, his fathers, kings of Yehuda, had dedicated, and his own hollow things, and all the gold that was found in the treasures of the house of Yahuwah and in the king's house, and sent it to Hazael king of Syria. And he went away from Jerusalem. And the rest of the acts of Jehoash and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yehuda? And his servants arose and made a conspiracy and slew Yahuash in the house of Milo, which goeth down to Selah. For Yazokar, the son of Shimeath, and Yahuzabad, the son of Shomer, his servants, smote him, and he died. And they buried him with his fathers in the city of David. And Amaziyahu, his son, reigned in his stead. Second Kings 13 In the three and twentieth year of Yahuash the son of Ahaziyahu, king of Yehuda, Yahu Ahaz the son of Yahu began to reign over Yasharel in Samaria and reigned seventeen years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah, and followed the sins of Yorobaam, the son of Nebat, which made Yasharel to sin, he departed not therefrom. And the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against Yasharel, and he delivered them into the hand of Hazael king of Syria, and into the hand of Ben-Hadad the son of Hazael all their days. And Yahuahaz besought Yahuwah, and Yahuwah hearkened unto him, for he saw the oppression of Yasharel, because the king of Syria oppressed them. And Yahuwah gave Yasharel a savior, so that they went out from under the hand of the Syrians, and the children of Yasharel dwelt in their tents as before time. Nevertheless, they departed not from the sins of the house of Jeroboam, who made Yasharel sin, but walked therein, and there remained the grove also in Samaria. Neither did he leave of the people to Yehoahaz, but fifty horsemen, and ten chariots, and ten thousand footmen, for the king of Syria had destroyed them, and had made them like the dust by threshing. Now the rest of the acts of Yehoahaz, and all that he did, and his might, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yasharel? And Yehoahaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. 
and Yahuash, his son, reigned in his stead. In the thirty and seventh year of Yehoash, king of Yehuda, began Yehoash, the son of Yehoahaz, to reign over Yasharel in Samaria, and reign sixteen years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah. He departed not from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Yasharel sin, but he walked therein. And the rest of the acts of Yoash, and all that he did, and his might, wherewith he fought against Amaziah Yahu, and the rest of the acts of Yoash, and all that he did, and his might, wherewith he fought against Amaziah Yahu, king of Yehuda, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yasharel? And Yoash slept with his fathers, and Jeroboam sat upon his throne, and Yoash was buried in Samaria with the kings of Yasharel. Now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness whereof he died. And Yoash the king of Yasharel came down unto him and wept over his face and said, O my father, my father, the chariot of Yasharel and the horsemen thereof. And Elisha said unto him, Take bow and arrows. And he took unto him bow and arrows. And he said to the king of Yasharel, Put thine hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. And he said, Open the window eastward, and he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shoot, and he shot. And he said, The arrow of Yahuwah's deliverance, and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For thou shalt smite the Syrians in Aphek, till thou have consumed them. And he said, Take the arrows, and he took them. And he said unto the king of Yasharel, Smite upon the ground. And he smote thrice, and stayed. And the man of Elohim was wroth with him, and said, Thou shouldest have smitten five or six times. Then hadst thou smitten Syria till thou hadst consumed it, whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice. And Elisha died, and they buried him. And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming in of the year. And it came to pass, as they were burying a man, that, behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast the man into the sepulchre of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. But Hazael, king of Syria, oppressed Yasharel all the days of Yehoahaz. But Hazael, king of Syria, oppressed Yasharel all the days of Yehoahaz. And Yahuwah was gracious unto them, and had compassion on them, and had respect unto them because of his covenant with Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, and would not destroy them, neither cast he them from his presence as yet. So Hazael, king of Syria, died, and Ben-Hadad his son reigned in his stead. And Yahuash, the son of Yahuahaz, took again out of the hand of Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazael, the cities, which he had taken out of the hand of Yahuahaz, his father, by war. Three times did Yoash beat him, and recovered the cities of Yasharel. Second Kings 14 In the second year of Yoash, son of Yehoahaz, king of Yasharel, reigned Amaziyahu, the son of Yoash, king of Yehuda. He was twenty and five years old when he began to reign and reigned twenty and nine years in Yerushalayim, and his mother's name was Jehoadan of Yerushalayim. And he did that which was right in the sight of Yahuwah, yet not like David his father. He did according to all things as Joash his father did. Howbeit, the high places were not taken away, as yet the people did sacrifice and burnt incense on the high places. And it came to pass, as soon as the kingdom was confirmed in his hand, that he slew his servants, which had slain the king his father. But the children of the murderers he slew not, according unto that which is written in the book of the law of Moses, wherein Yahuwah commanded, saying, The fathers shall not be put to death for the children, nor the children be put to death for the fathers, but every man shall be put to death for his own sin. He slew of Edom in the valley of Salt ten thousand, and took Selah by war, and call the name of it Jokteel unto this day. 
Then Amaziah sent messengers to Yahuash, the son of Yahoahaz, son of Yahu, king of Yasharel, saying, Come, let us look one another in the face. And Yahuash, the king of Yasharel, sent to Amaziah, king of Yehuda, saying, The thistle that was in Lebanon sent to the cedar that was in Lebanon, saying, Give thy daughter to my son to wife. And there passed by a wild beast that was in Lebanon, and trode down the thistle. Thou hast indeed smitten Edom, and thine heart hath lifted thee up. Glory of this, and tarry at home. For why shouldest thou meddle to thy hurt, that thou shouldest fall, even thou, and Yehuda with thee? But Amazi Yahu would not hear. Therefore Yahuash king of Yasharel went up, and he and Amazi Yahu king of Yehuda looked one another in the face at Beit Shemesh, which belongeth to Yehuda. And Yehuda was put to the worse before Yasharel, and they fled every man to their tents. And Yehoash king of Yasharel took Amazi Yahu king of Yehuda, the son of Yehuash, the son of Ahazi Yahu at Beit Shemesh, and came to Yerushalayim, and brake down the wall of Yerushalayim, from the gate of Ephraim unto the corner gate, four hundred cubits. And he took all the gold and silver, and all the vessels that were found in the house of Yahuwah, and in the treasures of the king's house, and hostages, and returned to Samaria. Now the rest of the acts of Yehoash which he did, and his might, and how he fought with Amaziah king of Yehuda, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yasharel? And Yehoash slept with his fathers, and was buried in Samaria, with the kings of Yasharel. And Jeroboam his son reigned in his stead. And Amaziah the son of Yoash king of Yehuda, lived after the death of Yehoash son of Yehoahaz, king of Yasharel, fifteen years. And the rest of the acts of Amaziah, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yehuda? Now they made a conspiracy against him in Yerushalayim, and he fled to Lachish. But they sent after him to Lachish, and slew him there. And they brought him on horses, and he was buried at Yerushalayim with his fathers in the city of David. And all the people of Yehuda took Azariah, which was sixteen years old, and made him king instead of his father Amaziah. He built Elath, and restored it to Yehuda, after that the king slept with his fathers. In the fifteenth year of Amaziah, the son of Yoash, king of Yehuda, Jeroboam, the son of Yoash, king of Yasharel, began to reign in Samaria, and reigned forty and one years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah. He departed not from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Yasharel to sin. He restored the coast of Yasharel from the entering of Hamath unto the sea of the plain, according to the word of Yahuwah Elohim of Yasharel, which he spake by the hand of his servant Yonah, the son of Amitai, the prophet, which was of Gath Hefer. For Yahuwah saw the affliction of Yasharel, that it was very bitter, for there was not any shut up, nor any left, nor any helper for Yasharel. And Yahuwah said not, that he would blot out the name of Yasharel from under heaven. But he saved them by the hand of Yeroboam the son of Yoash. Now the rest of the acts of Yeroboam, and all that he did, and his might, how he warred, and how he recovered Damascus and Hamath, which belonged to Yehuda for Yasharel, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yasharel? And Yeroboam slept with his fathers, even with the kings of Yasharel. And Zachariah, his son, reigned in his stead. Second Kings 15 In the twenty and seventh year of Jeroboam king of Yasharel began Azar Yahu son of Amazi Yahu king of Yehuda to reign. Sixteen years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned two and fifty years in Yerushalayim. And his mother's name was Yekola Yahu of Yerushalayim, and he did that which was right in the sight of Yahuwah, according to all that his father Amazi Yahu had done. Save that the high places were not removed, the people sacrificed, and burnt incense still on the high places. And Yahuwah smote the king, so that he was a leper unto the day of his death, 
and dwelt in a several house. And Yotham the king's son was over the house, judging the people of the land. And the rest of the acts of Azar Yahu and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yehuda? So Azar Yahu slept with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in the city of David. And Yotham his son reigned in his stead. In the thirty and eighth year of Azar Yahu king of Yehuda, did Zechar Yahu the son of Yeroboam reign over Yasharel in Samaria six months. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah, as his fathers had done. He departed not from the sins of Yeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Yasharel to sin. And Shalom, the son of Yabesh, conspired against him, and smote him before the people, and slew him, and reigned in his stead. And the rest of the acts of Zechariahu, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yasharel. This was the word of Yahuwah which he spake unto Yehu, saying, Thy son shall sit on thy throne of Yasharel unto the fourth generation. And so it came to pass. Shalom the son of Yabesh began to reign in the nine and thirtieth year of Uzi Yahu king of Yehuda, and he reigned a full month in Samaria. For Menahem the son of Gadi went up from Tirzah, and came to Samaria, and smote Shalom the son of Yabesh in Samaria, and slew him, and reigned in his stead. And the rest of the acts of Shalom and his conspiracy, which he made, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yasharel. Then Menachem smote Tifsah, and all that were therein, and the coast thereof from Tirzah, because they opened not to him. Therefore he smote it, and all the women therein that were with child he ripped up. In the nine and thirtieth year of Azar Yahu king of Yehuda began Menachem the son of Gadi to reign over Yasharel, and reigned ten years in Samaria. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah. He departed not all his days from the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who made Yasharel to sin. And Pul the king of Assyria came against the land, and Menachem gave Pul a thousand talents of silver, that his hand might be with him to confirm the kingdom in his hand. And Menahem exacted the money of Yasharel, even of all the mighty men of wealth, of each man fifty shekels of silver, to give to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria turned back and stayed not there in the land. And the rest of the acts of Menahem and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yasharel? And Menahem slept with his fathers, and Pekahyahu his son reigned in his stead. In the fiftieth year of Azar Yahu king of Yehuda, Pekahyahu the son of Menahem began to reign over Yasharel in Samaria, and reigned two years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who made Yasharel to sin. But Pekah the son of Remal Yahu, a captain of his, conspired against him, and smote him in Samaria, and the palace of the king's house, with Argov and Ariyah, and with him fifty men of the Gileadites, and he killed him, and reigned in his room. And the rest of the acts of Pekah Yahu, and all that he did, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yasharel. In the two and fiftieth year of Azar Yahu, king of Yehuda, Pekah the son of Rimel Yahu, began to reign over Yasharel in Samaria, and reigned twenty years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who made Yasharel to sin. In the days of Pekah, king of Yasharel, came Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, and took Eon and Abel bet Maaka, and Yanoah, and Kedesh, and Hazor, and Gilead, and Galilee, all the land of Naphtali, and carried them captive to Assyria. And Hosea, the son of Elah, made a conspiracy against Pekah, the son of Ramel Yahu, and smote him, and slew him, and reigned in his stead. In the twentieth year of Yotham, the son of Uzi Yahu, and the rest of the acts of Pekah, and all that he did, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yasharel.
In the second year of Pekah, the son of Remel Yahu, king of Yasharel, began Yotham, the son of Uzi Yahu, king of Yehuda, to reign. Five and twenty years old was he when he began to reign. And he reigned sixteen years in Yerushalayim, and his mother's name was Yerusha, the daughter of Zadok. And he did that which was right in the sight of Yahuwah. He did according to all that his father Uzi Yahu had done. Howbeit the high places were not removed, the people sacrificed and burned incense still in the high places. He built the higher gate of the gate of Yahuwah. Now the rest of the acts of Yotham and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yehuda? In those days, Yahuwah began to sin against Yehuda, Rezan, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramel Yahu. And Yotham slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father. And Ahaz, his son, reigned in his stead. Second Kings 16 In the seventeenth year of Pekah, the son of Ramal Yahu, Ahaz, the son of Yotham, king of Yehuda, began to reign. Twenty years old was Ahaz when he began to reign, and reigned sixteen years in Yerushalayim, and did not that which was right in the sight of Yahuwah his Elohim, like David his father. But he walked in the way of the kings of Yasharel, yea, and made his son to pass through the fire according to the abominations of the heathen, whom Yahuwah cast out from before the children of Yasharel. And he sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places, and on the hills, and under every green tree. Then Rezan, king of Syria, and Pekas, son of Ramal Yahu, king of Yasharel, came up to Yerushalayim to war, and they besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. At that time, Rezan king of Syria recovered Alath to Syria and drave the Yahudim from Alath. And the Syrians came to Alath and dwelt there unto this day. So Ahaz sent messengers to Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, saying, I am thy servant and thy son. Come up and save me out of the hand of the king of Syria and out of the hand of the king of Yasharel, which rise up against me. And Ahaz took the silver and gold that was found in the house of Yahuwah, and in the treasures of the king's house, and sent it for a present to the king of Assyria. And the king of Assyria hearkened unto him, for the king of Assyria went up against Damascus, and took it, and carried the people of it captive to Ker, and slew Rezan. And king Ahaz went to Damascus, to meet Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria and saw an altar that was at Damascus. And King Ahaz sent to Yuri Yahu the priest the fashion of the altar and the pattern of it, according to all the workmanship thereof. And Yuri Yahu the priest built an altar according to all that King Ahaz had sent from Damascus. So Yuri Yahu the priest made it against King Ahaz came from Damascus. And when the king was come from Damascus, the king saw the altar, and the king approached to the altar and offered thereon. And he burnt his burnt offering and his meat offering, and poured his drink offering, and sprinkled the blood of his peace offerings upon the altar. And he brought also the brazen altar, which was before Yahuwah, from the forefront of the house, from between the altar and the house of Yahuwah, and put it on the north side of the altar. And King Ahaz commanded Yuri Yahu the priest, saying, Upon the great altar burn the morning burnt offering, and the evening meat offering, and the king's burnt sacrifice, and his meat offering, with the burnt offering of all the people of the land, and their meat offering, and their drink offerings, and sprinkle upon it all the blood of the burnt offering, and all the blood of the sacrifice, and the brazen altar shall be for me to inquire by. Thus did Yuri Yahu the priest, according to all that King Ahaz commanded. And King Ahaz cut off the borders of the bases, and removed the lava from off them, and took down the sea from off the brazen oxen that were under it, and put it upon a pavement of stones, and the covert for the Sabbath that they had built in the house, and the king's entry without, turned he from the house of Yahuwah for the king of Assyria. 
Now the rest of the acts of Ahaz which he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yehuda? And Ahaz slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And Hezekiah, his son, reigned in his stead. Second Kings 17 In the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, began Hoshea, the son of Elah, to reign in Samaria over Israel nine years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah, but not as the kings of Israel that were before him. Against him came up Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, and Hoshea became his servant and gave him presents. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hoshea, for he had sent messengers to So, king of Egypt, and brought no present to the king of Assyria, as he had done year by year. Therefore the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years. In the ninth year of Hoshea, king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in Habur by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against Yahuwah their Elohim, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and had feared other gods and walked in the statutes of the heathen, whom Yahuwah cast out from before the children of Israel, and of the kings of Israel, which they had made. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against Yahuwah their Elohim, and they built them high places in all their cities, from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. And they set them up images in groves, in every high hill, and under every green tree. And there they burnt incense in all the high places, as did the heathen whom Yahuwah carried away before them, and wrought wicked things to provoke Yahuwah to anger. For they served idols, whereof Yahuwah had said unto them, Ye shall not do this thing. Yet Yahuwah testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways, and keep my commandments and my statutes, according to all the law which I commanded your fathers, and which I sent to you by my servants the prophets. Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but hardened their necks, like to the neck of their fathers, that did not believe in Yahuwah their Elohim. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers, and his testimonies which he testified against them, and they followed vanity and became vain, and went after the heathen that were round about them, concerning whom Yahuwah had charged them that they should not do like them. And they left all the commandments of Yahuwah their Elohim, and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove, and worshipped all the host of heaven, and served Baal. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of Yahuwah to provoke him to anger. Therefore Yahuwah was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. Also Judah kept not the commandments of Yahuwah their Elohim but walked in the statutes of Israel which they made. And Yahuwah rejected all the seed of Israel, and afflicted them, and delivered them into the hand of spoilers, until he had cast them out of his sight. For he rent Israel from the house of David, and they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat king. And Jeroboam drave Israel from following Yahuwah, and made them sin a great sin. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did, they departed not from them. Until Yahuwah removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said by all his servants the prophets. 
So was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Kufa and from Ava and from Hamath and from Safavaim and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. And so it was at the beginning of their dwelling there that they feared not Yahuwah. Therefore Yahuwah sent lions among them, which slew some of them. Wherefore they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations which thou hast removed and placed in the cities of Samaria know not the manner of the Elohim of the land. Therefore he hath sent lions among them, and behold, they slay them, because they know not the manner of the Elohim of the land. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests whom ye brought from thence, and let them go and dwell there, and let him teach them the manner of the Elohim of the land. Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel, and taught them how they should fear Yahuwah. Howbeit every nation made gods of their own, and put them in the houses of the high places, which the Samaritans had made, every nation in their cities wherein they dwelt. And the men of Babylon made Sukuth Binath, and the men of Kuth made Nurgal, and the men of Hamath made Ashima, and the Avites made Nibhaz and Tartak, and the Sepharvites burnt their children in fire to Adramalek and Anamalek, the gods of Sepharvaim. So they feared Yahuwah and made up to themselves of the lowest of them priests of the high places, which sacrificed for them in the houses of the high places. They feared Yahuwah and served their own gods after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence. Unto this day they do after the former manners. They feared not Yahuwah, neither do they after their statutes or after their ordinances or after the law and commandment which Yahuwah commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel with whom Yahuwah had made a covenant, and charged them, saying, Ye shall not fear other gods, nor bow yourselves to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice to them. But Yahuwah, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt with great power, and a stretched out arm, him shall ye fear, and him shall ye worship, and to him shall ye do sacrifice. And the statutes, and the ordinances, and the law, and the commandment, which he wrote for you, ye shall observe to do forevermore, and ye shall not fear other Elohim. And the covenant that I have made with you ye shall not forget, neither shall ye fear other gods. But Yahuwah your Elohim ye shall fear, and he shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. Howbeit they did not hearken, but they did after their former manner. So these nations feared Yahuwah, and served their graven images, both their children and their children's children, as did their fathers, so do they unto this day. Second Kings 18 Now it came to pass, in the third year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Yasharel, that Hezekiah, Yekezkiyahu, the son of Ahaz, king of Yehuda, began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Yerushalayim. His mother's name also was Avi, the daughter of Zakaryahu. And he did that which was right in the sight of Yahuwah, according to all that David his father did. He removed the high places, and brake the images, and cut down the groves, and brake in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days the children of Yasharel did burn incense to it, and he called it Nehushtan. He trusted in Yahuwah Elohim of Yasharel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Yehuda, nor any that were before him. 
For he clave to Yahuwah, and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments, which Yahuwah commanded Moses. And Yahuwah was with him, and he prospered whithersoever he went forth. And he rebelled against the king of Assyria, and served him not. He smote the Philistines, even unto Gaza, and the borders thereof, from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. And it came to pass, in the fourth year of King Yekezki Yahu, which was the seventh year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Yasharel, that Shalmanezer, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria and besieged it. And at the end of three years, they took it, even in the sixth year of Yekezki Yahu, that is, the ninth year of Hoshea, king of Yasharel, Samaria was taken. And the king of Assyria did carry away Yasharel unto Assyria, and put them in Hala and in Habor by the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes, because they obeyed not the voice of Yahuwah their Elohim, but transgressed his covenant, and all that Moses the servant of Yahuwah commanded, and would not hear them, nor do them. Now in the fourteenth year of King Yekezki Yahu did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, come up against all the fenced cities of Yehuda and took them. And Yekezki Yahu, king of Yehuda, sent to the king of Assyria to Lachish, saying, I have offended, return from me, that which thou puttest on me will I bear. And the king of Assyria appointed unto Yekezki Yahu, king of Yehuda, three hundred talents of silver and thirty talents of gold. And Yekezki Yahu gave him all the silver that was found in the house of Yahuwah and in the treasures of the king's house. At that time did Yekezki Yahu cut off the gold from the doors of the temple of Yahuwah and from the pillars which Yekezki Yahu, king of Yehuda, had overlaid and gave it to the king of Assyria. And the king of Assyria sent Tartan and Rapsares and Rapshaka from Lachish to King Yekezki Yahu with a great host against Yerushalayim. And they went up and came to Yerushalayim. And when they were come up, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pool, which is in the highway of the fuller's field. And when they had called to the king, there came out to them Eliakim, the son of Hilki Yahu, which was over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and Yoah the son of Asaph the recorder. And Rafshakah said unto them, Speak ye now to Yekezki Yahu, thus saith the great king, the king of Assyria. What confidence is this wherein thou trustest? Thou sayest, but they are but vain words. I have counsel and strength for the war. Now on whom dost thou trust? that thou rebellest against me. Now, behold, thou trustest upon the staff of this bruised reed, even upon Egypt, on which if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt unto all that trust on him. But if ye say unto me, We trust in Yahuwah our Elohim, is not that he whose high places and whose altars Yekezki Yahu hath taken away? and hath said to Yehuda and Yerushalayim, Ye shall worship before this altar in Yerushalayim? Now therefore, I pray thee, give pledges to my Adonai, the king of Assyria, and I will deliver thee two thousand horses, if thou be able on thy part to set riders upon them. How then wilt thou turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servants, and put thy trust on Egypt for chariots and for horsemen? Am I now come up without Yahuwah against this place to destroy it? Yahuwah said to me, Go up against this land and destroy it. Then said Eliakim, the son of Hilki Yahu, and Shebna, and Yoah, unto Rav Shaka, Speak, I pray thee, to thy servants in the Syrian language, for we understand it, and talk not with us in the Yahudim language in the ears of the people that are on the wall. But Rapshaka said unto them, Hath my master sent me to thy master and to thee to speak these words? Hath he not sent me to the men which sit on the wall, that they may eat their own dung and drink their own piss with you? Then Rapshaka stood and cried with a loud voice in the Yahudim's language, and spake, saying, Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. 
Thus saith the king, Let not Yekez Kiyahu deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you out of his hand. Neither let Yekez Kiyahu make you trust in Yahuwah, saying, Yahuwah will surely deliver us, and this city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Hearken not to Yekez Kiyahu, for thus saith the king of Assyria, Make an agreement with me by a present, and come out to me, and then eat ye every man of his own vine, and every one of his fig tree, and drink ye every one the waters of his cistern, until I come, and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of oil, olive, and of honey, that ye may live and not die. And hearken not unto Yekez ki Yahu when he persuaded you, saying, Yahuwah will deliver us. Hath any of the gods of the nations delivered at all his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and of Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvaim, Hana, and Eva? Have they delivered Samaria out of mine hand? Who are they among all the gods of the countries that have delivered their country out of mine hand, that Yahuwah should deliver Yerushalayim out of mine hand? But the people held their peace and answered him not a word, for the king's commandment was, saying, Answer him not. Then came Eliakim, the son of Hilkiyahu, which was over the household, and Shabna the scribe, and Yoab, the son of Asaph, the recorder, to Yehizkiyahu with their clothes rent, and told him the words of Rabshakeh. Second Kings 19 And it came to pass, when King Yehizkiyahu heard it, that he rent his clothes, and covered himself with sackcloth, and went into the house of Yahuwah. And he sent Eliakim, which was over the household, and Shevna the scribe, and the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth, to Yishiyahu the prophet, the son of Amaz. And they said unto him, Thus saith Yekezki Yahu, This day is a day of trouble, and of rebuke, and blasphemy. For the children are come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. It may be, Yahuwah thy Elohim will hear all the words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria, his master, hath sent to reproach the living Elohim, and will reprove the words which Yahuwah thy Elohim hath heard. Wherefore, lift up thy prayer for the remnant that are left. So the servants of King Yekezki Yahu came to Yishiyahu. And Yishiyahu said unto them, Thus shall ye say to your master, Thus saith Yahuwah, Be not afraid of the words which thou hast heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor, and shall return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. So Rabshakeh returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna, for he had heard that he was departed from Lachish. And when he heard say of Tirhaka, king of Ethiopia, Behold, he has come out to fight against thee, he sent messengers again unto Yekezki Yahu, saying, Thus shall ye speak to Yekezki Yahu, king of Yehuda, saying, Let not thy Elohim in whom thou trustest deceive thee, saying, Yerushalayim shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, thou hast heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands by destroying them utterly, and shalt thou be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered them which my fathers have destroyed, as Gozad and Haran and Rezeph and the children of Eden, which were in Thelesar? Where is the king of Hamath, and the king of Arpad, and the king of the city of Sepharvaim, of Hena and Eva? And Yekizki Yahu received the letter of the hand of the messengers, and read it. And Yekizki Yahu went up into the house of Yahuwah, and spread it before Yahuwah. And Yekizki Yahu prayed before Yahuwah, and said, O Yahuwah Elohim of Yasharel, which dwellest between the cherubim, thou art the Elohim, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Yahuwah, bow down thine ear and hear. 
Open, Yahuwah, thine eyes, and see, and hear the words of Sennacherib, which has sent him to reproach the living Elohim. Of a truth, Yahuwah, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their lands, and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they have destroyed them. Now, therefore, O Yahuwah, our Elohim, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art Yahuwah Elohim, even thou only. Then Yishiyahu, the son of Amaz, sent to Yekizkiyahu, saying, Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim of Yasharel, That which thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. This is the word that Yahuwah has spoken concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, hath despised thee and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem hath shaken her head at thee. Whom hast thou reproached and blasphemed? And against whom hast thou exalted thy voice and lifted up thine eyes on high, even against the Holy One of Yasharel? By thy messengers thou hast reproached the Adonai, and has said, With the multitude of my chariots I have come up to the height of the mountains, to the sides of Lebanon, and will cut down the tall cedar trees thereof, and the choice fir trees thereof, and I will enter into the lodgings of his borders, and into the forest of his Carmel. I have digged and drunk strange waters, and with the sole of my feet have I dried up all the rivers of besieged places. Hast thou not heard long ago how I have done it, and of ancient times that I have formed it? Now have I brought it to pass, that thou shouldest be to lay waste fenced cities into ruinous heaps. Therefore their inhabitants were of small power. They were dismayed and confounded. They were as the grass of the field, and as the green herb, as the grass on the housetops, and as corn blasted before it be grown up. But I know thy abode, and thy going out, and thy coming in, and thy rage against me. Because thy rage against me, and thy tumult is come up into mine ears, Therefore I will put my hook in thy nose, and my bridle in thy lips, and I will turn thee back by the way by which thou camest. And this shall be a sign unto thee, ye shall eat this year such things as grow of themselves, and in the second year that which springeth of the same. And in the third year sow ye, and reap, and plant vineyards, and eat the fruit thereof. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Yehuda shall yet again take root downward and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant. And they that escape out of Mount Zion, the zeal of Yahuwah Sebaoth shall do this. Therefore, thus saith Yahuwah concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into this city, saith Yahuwah. For I will defend this city to save it, for mine own sake, and for my servant David's sake. And it came to pass that night, that the angel of Yahuwah went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred fourscore and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. And it came to pass, as he was worshipping in the house of Nisroch his god, that Adramelech and Sharezer his sons smote him with the sword, and they escaped into the land of Armenia. And Esarhaddon his son reigned in his stead. Second Kings 20 In those days was Yehezkiyahu sick unto death, and the prophet Yishiyahu the son of Amoz came to him, and said unto him, Thus saith Yahuwah, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. 
Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto Yahuwah, saying, I beseech thee, O Yahuwah, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Yikazki Yahu wept sore. And it came to pass, afore Yishiyahu was gone out into the middle court, that the word of Yahuwah came to him, saying, Turn again, and tell Yikizki Yahu, the captain of my people. Thus saith Yahuwah, the Elohim of David thy father. I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of Yahuwah, and I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for mine own sake, and for my servant David's sake. And Yeshayahu said, Take a lump of figs, and they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. And Yekizki Yahu said unto Yishiyahu, What shall be the sign that Yahuwah will heal me, and that I shall go up into the house of Yahuwah the third day? And Yishiyahu said, This sign shalt thou have of Yahuwah, that Yahuwah will do the thing that he has spoken. Shall the shadow go forward ten degrees, or go back ten degrees? And Yekizki Yahu answered, it is a light thing for the shadow to go down ten degrees. Nay, but let the shadow return backward ten degrees. And Yishiyahu the prophet cried unto Yahuwah, and he brought the shadow ten degrees backward, by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. At that time, Berodak Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present unto Yekizki Yahu, for he had heard that Yekizki Yahu had been sick. And Yekizki Yahu hearkened unto them, and showed them all the house of his precious things, the silver, and the gold, and the spices, and the precious ointment, and all the house of his armor, and all that was found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house, nor in all his dominion, that Yekizki Yahu showed them not. Then came Yishiyahu the prophet unto king Yekizki Yahu, and said unto him, What said these men, and from whence came they unto thee? And Yekizki Yahu said, They are come from a far country, even from Babylon. And he said, What have they seen in thine house? And Yekizki Yahu answered, All the things that are in mine house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. And Yishiyahu said unto Yekizki Yahu, Hear the word of Yahuwah. Behold, the days come, that all that is in thine house, and that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day, shall be carried into Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith Yahuwah. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away. And they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then said Yekezki Yahu unto Yishiyahu, Good is the word of Yahuwah which thou hast spoken. And he said, Is it not good if peace and truth be in my days? And the rest of the acts of Yekizki Yahu and all his might, and how he made a pool and a conduit and brought water into the city, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yehuda? And Yekizki Yahu slept with his fathers, and Manasseh, his son, reigned in his stead. Second Kings 21 Manasseh was twelve years old when he began to reign, and reigned fifty and five years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Hephzibah. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah, after the abominations of the heathen, whom Yahuwah cast out before the children of Yasharel. For he built up again the high places, which Yekizki Yahu his father had destroyed. And he reared up altars for Baal, and made a grove, as did Ahav king of Yasharel, and worshipped all the host of heaven, and served them. And he built altars in the house of Yahuwah, of which Yahuwah said, In Jerusalem will I put my name. And he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of Yahuwah. 
and he made his son pass through the fire and observe times and used enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of Yahuwah to provoke him to anger. And he set a graven image of the grove that he had made in the house, of which Yahuwah said to David and to Shalomah his son, In this house and in Yerushalayim, which I have chosen out of all tribes of Yasharel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I make the feet of Yasharel move any more out of the land which I gave their fathers, only if they will observe to do according to all that I have commanded them, and according to all the law that my servant Moses commanded them. But they hearken not, and Manasseh seduced them to do more evil than did the nations whom Yahuwah destroyed before the children of Yasharel. And Yahuwah spake by his servants the prophets, saying, Because Manasseh, king of Yehuda, have done these abominations, and have done wickedly above all that the Amorites did, which were before him, and have made Yehuda also to sin with his idols. Therefore, thus saith Yahuwah Elohim of Yasharel, Behold, I am bringing such evil upon Jerusalem and Yehuda that whosoever heareth of it, both his ears shall tingle. And I will stretch over Jerusalem the line of Samaria and the plummet of the house of Ahab. And I will wipe Jerusalem as a man wipeth a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. And I will forsake the remnant of mine inheritance, and deliver them into the hand of their enemies, and they shall become a prey and a spoil to all their enemies. Because they have done that which was evil in my sight, and have provoked me to anger, since the day their fathers came forth out of Egypt, even unto this day. Moreover, Manasseh shed innocent blood very much, till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another, beside his sin wherewith he made Yehuda to sin in doing that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and all that he did, and his sin that he sinned, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Yehuda? And Manasseh slept with his fathers, and was buried in the garden of his own house, in the garden of Uzzah, and Ammon his son reigned in his stead. Ammon was twenty and two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Meshulameth, the daughter of Haruz of Yotbah, and he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah, as his father Manasseh did. And he walked in all the way that his father walked in, and served the idols that his father served, and worshipped them. And he forsook Yahuwah Elohim of his fathers, and walked not in the way of Yahuwah. And the servants of Ammon conspired against him, and slew the king in his own house. And the people of the land slew all them that had conspired against King Ammon. And the people of the land made Yoshiyahu his son king in his stead. Now the rest of the acts of Ammon which he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yehuda? And he was buried in his sepulcher in the garden of Uzzah. And Yoshiyahu his son reigned in his stead. Second Kings 22 Yashiyahu was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned thirty and one years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Yedidah, the daughter of Adeyahu of Boscah. And he did that which was right in the sight of Yahuwah, and walked in all the ways of David his father, and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. And it came to pass, in the eighteenth year of King Yashiyahu, that the king sent Shaphan, the son of Azaliyahu, the son of Meshulam, the scribe, to the house of Yahuwah, saying, Go up to Hilkiyahu, the high priest, that he may sum the silver which is brought into the house of Yahuwah, 
which the keepers of the door have gathered of the people, and let them deliver it into the hand of the doers of the work, that have the oversight of the house of Yahuwah, and let them give it to the doers of the work which is in the house of Yahuwah, to repair the breaches of the house, unto carpenters, and builders, and masons, and to buy timber and hewn stones, to repair the house. Howbeit, there was no reckoning made with them of the money that was delivered into their hand, because they dealt faithfully. And Hilki Yahu the high priest said unto Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of Yahuwah. And Hilki Yahu gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. And Shaphan the scribe came to the king, and brought the king word again, and said, Thy servants have gathered the money that was found in the house, and have delivered it into the hand of them that do the work, that have the oversight of the house of Yahuwah. And Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilke Yahu the priest hath delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass, when the king had heard the words of the book of the Torah, that he rent his clothes. And the king commanded Hilke Yahu the priest, and Ahikam the son of Shaphan, and Akbor the son of Mikiyahu, and Shaphan the scribe, and Asahayahu, a servant of the kings, saying, Go ye, inquire of Yahuwah for me, and for the people, and for all Yehuda, concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of Yahuwah that is kindled against us, because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book, to do according unto all that which is written concerning us. So Hilke Yahu the priest, and Ahikam, and Akbor, and Shaphan, and Asahayahu, went unto Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikva, the son of Harhas, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college, and they communed with her. And she said unto them, Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim of Yasharel, Tell the man that sent you to me, Thus saith Yahuwah, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of Yehuda hath read, because they have forsaken me, and have burned incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be kindled against this place, and shall not be quenched. But to the king of Yehuda, which sent you to inquire of Yahuwah, thus shall ye say to him, Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim of Yasharel, as touching the words which thou hast heard. Because thine heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before Yahuwah, when thou heardest what I spake against this place, and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and hast rent thy clothes, and wept before me, I also have heard thee, saith Yahuwah. Behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered into thy grave in peace and thine eyes shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. Second Kings 23 and the king sent, and they gathered unto him all the elders of Yehuda and of Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of Yahuwah, and all the men of Yehuda, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him, and the priests, and the prophets, and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant which was found in the house of Yahuwah. And the king stood by a pillar, and made a covenant before Yahuwah, to walk after Yahuwah, and to keep his commandments, and his testimonies, and his statutes, with all their heart, and all their soul, to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this sefer. And all the people stood to the covenant. And the king commanded Hilki Yahu the high priest, and the priests of the second order, and the keepers of the door, to bring forth out of the temple of Yahuwah all the vessels that were made for Baal, and for the grove, and for all the host of heaven. And he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kijan, and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. 
and he put down the idolatrous priests, whom the kings of Yehuda had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Yehuda, and in the places round about Jerusalem, them also that burn incense unto Baal, to the sun, and to the moon, and to the planets, and to all the host of heaven. And he brought out the grove from the house of Yahuwah without Jerusalem unto the brook Kedron, and burned it at the brook Kedron, and stamped it small to powder, and cast a powder thereof upon the graves of the children of the people. And he brake down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of Yahuwah, where the women wove hangings for the grove. And he brought all the priests out of the cities of Yehuda and defiled the high places where the priests had burned incense, from Geva to Be'er Sheva, and brake down the high places of the gates that were in the entering in of the gate of Yahusha, the governor of the city, which were on a man's left hand at the gate of the city. Nevertheless, the priests of the high places came not up to the altar of Yahuwah in Jerusalem, but they did eat of the unleavened bread among their brethren. And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom, that no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire to Malik. And he took away the horses that the kings of Yehuda had given to the son at the entering in of the house of Yahuwah by the chamber of Nathan Melech, the chamberlain, which was in the suburbs, and burned the chariots of the sun with fire and the altars that were on the top of the upper chamber of Ahaz, which the kings of Yehuda had made, and the altars which Manasseh had made in the two courts of the house of Yahuwah, did the king beat down and break them down from thence, and cast the dust of them into the brook Kidron, and the high places that were before Jerusalem, which were on the right hand of the Mount of Corruption, which Shalomah the king of Yasharel had builded for Ashtaroth, the abomination of the Zidonians, and for Chemosh, the abomination of the Moabites, and for Milcom, the abomination of the children of Ammon, did the king defile. And he brake in pieces the images, and cut down the groves, and fill their places with the bones of men. Moreover, the altar that was at Bethel, and the high place which Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who made Yasharel to sin, had made, both that altar and the high place he brake down, and burned the high place, and stamped it small to powder, and burned the grove. And as Yashiyahu turned himself, he spied the sepulchres that were there in the mount, and sent, and took the bones out of the sepulchres, and burned them upon the altar, and polluted it, according to the word of Yahuwah, which the man of Elohim proclaimed, who proclaimed these words. Then he said, what title is that that I see? And the men of the city told him, It is a sepulchre of the man of Elohim, which came from Yehuda, and proclaimed these things that thou hast done against the altar of Beit El. And he said, Let him alone, let no man move his bones. So they let his bones alone, with the bones of the prophet that came out of Samaria. And all the houses also of the high places that were in the cities of Samaria, which the kings of Yasharel had made to provoke Yahuwah to anger, Yashiyahu took away, and did to them according to all the acts that he had done in Bethel. And he slew all the priests of the high places that were there upon the altars, and burned men's bones upon them, and returned to Jerusalem. And the king commanded all the people, saying, Keep the Passover unto Yahuwah your Elohim, as it is written in the Sefer of this covenant. Surely there was not holding such a Passover from the days of the judges that judge Yasharel, nor in all the days of the kings of Israel, nor of the kings of Yehuda. But in the eighteenth year of King Yashiyahu, wherein this Passover was holding to Yahuwah in Jerusalem. Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits, and the wizards, and the images, and the idols, and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Yehuda and in Jerusalem, did Yashiyahu put away, that he might perform the words of the law, which were written in the book that Hilki Yahu the priest found in the house of Yahuwah. And like unto him was there no king before him that turned to Yahuwah with all his heart, and with all his soul, and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses. Neither after him arose there any like him. 
Notwithstanding, Yahuwah turned not from the fierceness of his great wrath, wherewith his anger was kindled against Yehuda, because of all the provocations that Manasseh had provoked him withal. And Yahuwah said, I will remove Yehuda also out of my sight, as I have removed Yasharel, and will cast off this city Yerushalayim, which I have chosen, and the house of which I said, My name shall be there. Now the rest of the acts of Yashiyahu and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yehuda? In his days, Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, went up against the king of Assyria to the river Euphrates, and King Yashiyahu went against him, and he slew him at Megiddo when he had seen him. And his servants carried him in a chariot dead from Megiddo, and brought him to Jerusalem, and buried him in his own sepulcher. And the people of the land took Yehuahaz, the son of Yashiyahu, and anointed him, and made him king in his father's stead. Yehuahaz was twenty and three years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Yerimayahu of Libna. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah, according to all that his fathers had done. And Pharaoh Necho put him in bands at Ribla, in the land of Hamath, that he might not reign in Jerusalem, and put the land to a tribute of a hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. And Pharaoh Necho made Eliakim the son of Yashiyahu king in the room of Yashiyahu his father, and turned his name to Yahuakim, and took Yahuahaz away, and he came to Egypt and died there. And Yehoiakim gave the silver and the gold to Pharaoh, but he taxed the land to give money according to the commandment of Pharaoh. He exacted the silver and the gold of the people of the land, of every one according to his taxation, to give it unto Pharaoh Necho. Yehoiakim was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Zabuda, the daughter of Pediyahu of Ramah. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah, according to all that his fathers had done. Second Kings 24 In his days, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, and Jehoiakim became his servant three years. Then he turned and rebelled against him. And Yahuwah sent against him bands of the Chaldees, and bands of the Syrians, and bands of the Moabites, and bands of the children of Ammon, and sent them against Yehuda to destroy it, according to the word of Yahuwah, which he spake by his servants the prophets. Surely at the commandment of Yahuwah came this upon Yehuda, to remove them out of his sight for the sins of Manasseh, according to all that he did and also for the innocent blood that he shed, for he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, which Yahuwah would not pardon. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yehuda? So Jehoiakim slept with his fathers, and Jehoiakim his son reigned in his stead. And the king of Egypt came not again any more out of his land, for the king of Babylon had taken from the river of Egypt unto the river Euphrates, all that pertained to the king of Egypt. Jehoiakim was eighteen years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months, and his mother's name was Nehushta, the daughter of El Nathan of Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah, according to all that his father had done. At that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came against the city, and his servants did besiege it. And Jehoiakim, the king of Yehuda, went out to the king of Babylon, he and his mother, and his servants, and his princes, and his officers. And the king of Babylon took him 
in the eighth year of his reign. And he carried out thence all the treasures of the house of Yahuwah and the treasures of the king's house and cut in pieces all the vessels of gold which Shulamah king of Yasharel had made in the temple of Yahuwah as Yahuwah had said. And he carried away all Yerushalayim and all the princes and all the mighty men of valor, even 10,000 captives and all the craftsmen and smiths None remained, save the poorest sort of the people of the land. And he carried away Jehoiakim to Babylon, and the king's mother, and the king's wives, and his officers, and the mighty of the land. Those carried he into captivity from Jerusalem to Babylon. And all the men of might, even seven thousand, and craftsmen, and smiths a thousand, all that were strong and apt for war, even them the king of Babylon brought captive to Babylon. And the king of Babylon made Mataniyahu, his father's brother, king in his stead, and changed his name to Zedekiahu. Zedekiahu was twenty and one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. and his mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Yerimeyahu of Libna. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. For through the anger of Yahuwah it came to pass in Jerusalem and Yehuda, until he had cast them out from his presence, that Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. Second Kings 25 And it came to pass, in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came, he and all his host, against Jerusalem, and pitched against it, and they built forts against it round about. And the city was besieged unto the eleventh year of king Zedekiah, and on the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine prevailed in the city, and there was no bread for the people of the land. And the city was broken up, and all the men of war fled by night by the way of the gate. And the city was broken up, and all the men of war fled by night by the way of the gate between two walls, which is by the king's garden. Now the Chaldees were against the city round about, and the king went the way toward the plain. And the army of the Chaldees pursued after the king, and overtook him in the plains of Jericho, and all his army were scattered from him. So they took the king, and brought him up to the king of Babylon to Riblah, and they gave judgment upon him. And they slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes, and put out the eyes of Zedekiah, and bound him with fetters of brass, and carried him to Babylon. And in the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, which is the nineteenth year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, a servant of the king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, And he burnt the house of Yahuwah, and the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem, And every great man's house burnt he with fire. And all the army of the Chaldees that were with the captain of the guard break down the walls of Jerusalem round about. Now the rest of the people that were left in the city, and the fugitives that fell away to the king of Babylon, with the remnant of the multitude, did Nebuzaradan the captain of the guard carry away. But the captain of the guard left of the poor of the land to be vine dressers and husbandmen. And the pillars of brass that were in the house of Yahuwah, and the bases, and the brazen sea that was in the house of Yahuwah, did the Chaldees break in pieces, and carried the brass of them to Babylon. And the pots, and the shovels, and the snuffers, and the spoons, and all the vessels of brass wherewith they ministered, took they away. And the firepans, and the bowls, and such things as were of gold, in gold, and of silver, in silver, the captain of the guard took away the two pillars, one sea, and the bases which Shalomah had made for the house of Yahuwah, the brass of all these vessels was without weight. The height of the one pillar was eighteen cubits, and the chapiter upon it was brass, and the height of the chapiter three cubits, and the wreathen work, and pomegranates upon the chapiter round about, 
all of brass, and like unto these have the second pillar with wreath and work. And the captain of the guard took Sereyahu the chief priest, and Zephaniahu the second priest, and the three keepers of the door. And out of the city he took an officer that was set over the men of war, and five men of them that were in the king's presence, which were found in the city, and the principal scribe of the host, which mustered the people of the land, and threescore men of the people of the land that were found in the city. And Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, took these and brought them to the king of Babylon to Riblah. And the king of Babylon smote them and slew them at Riblah in the land of Hamath. So Yehuda was carried away out of their land. And as for the people that remained in the land of Yehuda, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had left, even over them he made Gadiliyahu, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, ruler. And when all the captains of the armies, they and their men, heard that the king of Babylon had made Gadiliyahu governor, there came to Gadiliyahu, to Mizpah, even Ishmael, the son of Nethinayahu, and Yohanan, the son of Kariah, and Seriyahu, the son of Tanhumeth, the Netophathite, and Yaazanayahu, the son of of a Makathite, they and their men. And Gadaliyahu swear to them and to their men, and said unto them, Fear not to be the servants of the Chaldees, dwell in the land, and serve the king of Babylon, and it shall be well with you. But it came to pass in the seventh month that Ishmael the son of Nethaniyahu, the son of Elishama, of the seed royal, came, and ten men with him, and smote Gadaliyahu, that he died and the Yehudim and the Chaldees that were with him at Mitzpah. And all the people, both small and great, and the captains of the armies, arose and came to Egypt, for they were afraid of the Chaldees. And it came to pass, in the seven and thirtieth year of the captivity of Jehoiakim, king of Yehuda, in the twelfth month, on the seven and twentieth day of the month, that Evel Merodach, king of Babylon, in the year that he began to reign, did lift up the head of Jehoiakim, king of Yehuda, out of prison. And he spake kindly to him, and set his throne above the throne of the kings that were with him in Babylon, and changed his prison garments. And he did eat bread continually before him all the days of his life. And his allowance was a continual allowance given him of the king, a daily rate for every day, all the days of his life. The end of the book of Second Kings.